In the Chinese Room Argument, 1980, John Searle holds that a program cannot give a computer a mind nor an understanding, regardless of how intelligently it might make it behave. He concludes that, quote, I can have any formal program you like, but I still understand nothing, end of quote. What do you think of the Chinese Room Argument? Do you believe that the same metaphor can be still applied to some of the latest development of AI, such as robots with biological neural networks? I, I, I think it, it's really nice. John Searle came up with the Chinese room argument. Uh, I mean, it's a nice little um, philosophical discussion comparing how the human brain works and can potentially work with how a computer-based machine brain works. And it, it's nice. I, I'm not going to go into the, the, the Chinese room discussion here. I'll assume you've all... Um, you know, gone into it in detail. But one of the things it, it seems to show is that whereas the human brain can understand communication of one form or another, and when, when it, you say smelling a rose, it, it means something to the, the human brain in a somehow an inner uh, sensual way, um, that really points to consciousness, whereas the machine doesn't really understand what smelling a rose means about, what it means and so on. So you have issues there from which we get the, the pointers, therefore um, the, the machine is not conscious, we can't tell that it's conscious in any way, whereas humans are conscious and so on. And lots of follow-ons from that. <clears throat> Well, as, as Searle has said, then trying to get to grips with consciousness more, he has pointed very much to it being an emergent property. It's something that the difference is in the machine case, we've got bits of silicon. In the human brain case, we've got lots and lots of human neurons. You put them all together and when you get a sufficient quantity there, you get human consciousness coming out. That's what there is. And there's something substantially different. Penrose, Roger Penrose's philosophical arguments point to a similar sort of thing. Um, can we bridge over the difference in some way? Well, we, we need to understand exactly what's in the human neurons, maybe model them in some quanta way, look at the small changes. If we can't do that, then we're always going to have a difference between human consciousness and the best that machines can do. So very, very a lot of similarities between Searle and Penrose in the end. However, um, I mean, there are issues as to the importance of this difference, the machine consciousness not being exactly the same as human consciousness. Is it of any important significance? Probably not. If the machine uh, has... Uh, bombs and weapons and machine guns and I don't where me pointing my finger at it and saying ah ha, ha, you're not conscious you can't hurt me uh, it will shoot me and that's the end of it it won't uh, we won't argue philosophically the point to say ah, yeah but the Chinese room is wrong I don't think we're going to get any intelligent machines bothering too much about whether the Chinese room is right or wrong however we now have a form of artificial intelligence where it is made of human neurons. Quite simply, human neurons are grown and put in a body. Okay, presently the numbers of human neurons is not up to the number in the human brain. Okay, presently the body that the neurons are put in is more of a robot body. But the point is the emergent behaviour, consciousness coming out of human neurons acting together can now be artificially created simply by growing human neurons and putting them in a body. The numbers of neurons, I mean nowadays it's, it's something like 30 million as opposed to the 100 billion so if, in the human brain. So if it is purely a numerical thing, well in four or five years time we probably will have more human neurons highly connected in a robot body than we have in a human body. Then there's just questions as far as how does the robot body differ from the human body? But that's never been an issue for 
the, the arguments from philosophers about consciousness. We're not in the Chinese room saying, well, it's a, the computer is in a black box and the human is wearing a red sweater. Therefore, the red sweatered creature is the one that is conscious or the, the one in the red sweater has ears and the, the computer does not have ears or whatever it happens to be. I mean, and they're clearly any arguments and there's so many of them we'd just be able to tick the box and say, well, that's stupid, it's, it's, not, it's not a relevant point, the fact that the machine is not walking around or it doesn't support a football team or something like that is completely irrelevant as far as consciousness is concerned. And so, too, we have to come to that conclusion that when we put sufficient numbers of human neurons in a body, then we've got something that has to be as conscious as the the human brain it may be a little bit different but uh, it depends on the body and its experience and so on but the humans are very very different um, either young humans that haven't lived the baby the consciousness of the baby the consciousness of a human with dementia we have to consider all these types of people and possibly our first human brain robots will have more the consciousness of a dementia patient although that's you know they probably will have very good memory so that's probably not a good example but it may be not this perfect human consciousness not the consciousness of john searle or roger penrose but maybe it's just a matter of time